Hi, I'm Ruth Hudson, science educator with 3D Molecular Designs. Today is Friday the 13th. It's an unlucky day in the eyes of many. In the spirit of today, I want to share with you about chromosome 13. It's a mid-size autosomal chromosome that has its problems with luck as well. But before we talk about chromosome 13's problems, let's build one with the chromosome connection kit. So first you're going to need a centromere piece and some chromosome connectors. I'm going to use one at the top and I'm going to use three at the bottom underneath the centromere. And this is going to make our P arm and this is going to make our Q arm. I'm going to add cap pieces to the end and that's going to make our telomere. And so now I've made a chromosome. I would have my students make a chromatid that is identical. And then we can start talking about some of the things that are unique to chromosome 13. And one of those is that there are individuals that can have partial monosomies and partial trisomies of chromosome 13, and they would still be able to live anywhere depending on how much chromosome 13 they have or are lacking um, between two weeks after birth up to young adulthood. And they will require some assistance to help them live a productive life, but um, individuals uh, can do that. So to have my students understand how trisomies and monosomies occur, I would have them attach a kinetochore protein to the uh, centromere, and then a spindle fiber our spindle fibers are truncated, and so what that means is that they're just shorter because normal spindle fibers would go all the way from the kinetochore uh, fiber to the uh, side of the cell where it would attach to a centriole. But in this case, centrioles are going to be our hands. So we would also have another kinetochore and spindle fiber attached to um, this centromere as well. And we're, for today's video, all we're going to do is we're going to model meiosis 2 because there would have already been, um, there could have been a, a non-disjunction occurring at meiosis 1 that would give you the monosomy and the trisomy. But in this case, I'm just going to do meiosis 2. So we would show how those chromosomes separate we are going to have two cells. So in this area is going to be one cell, and this area is going to be another cell. Um, spindle fibers would go away. And then you would have in, in uh, those donating sperm, uh, four possible sperm being made, and in those donating egg, we would end up with one uh, possible egg. So in this case, we're going to model these two scenarios. So in this case, if I had a fertilization event occur, then um, together this individual would have uh, the normal number of chromosome 2. In this model, this individual would also have the normal number of chromosome 2, or 13, sorry. And then uh, we can look at another model. So remember we said that it was a trisomy. So first, before we go through and talk about what a partial monosomy or trisomy would be, we're going to look at what a, a complete monosomy and trisomy would be. So again, we attach our kinetochore and spindle fiber to one side of the chromosome at the centromere. And in this case, this one doesn't attach. And so when we have them divide, we have two chromosomes that would head this way, and then the other, there would be no chromosome in this cell. So, again, in the fertilization event, in this first one, we do not have a chromosome 13 from uh, that's red because it ended up over in this possible gamete. So this is a monosomy. In this one, we have three chromosomes, thir 13 but it's a partial. So in real life, what's occurring in individuals that would be able to be born is that 
one cell gets a little bit of chromosome 13 and one gets a little bit extra. So to model that with my students, I would have these divide so that we have a partial chromosome 13 here and we have um, a little extra chromosome 13 here. So then once these gametes are ready for fertilization, this one is going to form a partial trisomy. And this one is, is going to form a monozoe, where we have a little bit of chromosome 13, and then we have a full one. So that's nice, and my students would really find that interesting, but they might not understand how the implication of, of why you would have extra or less would really mean for an individual. So one of the things that we would want to do is we would want to look at the types of genes that you might find on chromosome 13 that could be affected if you have an extra one or you're missing one uh, or multiples. And that's why that makes a monosomy or a trisomy so um, detrimental to an individual. So for them to understand what's going on, we're going to expand the chromosome by using this um, chromosome expander. And this would then unspool the DNA so that you notice you have a supercoiled DNA that's wrapped around um, histone proteins that we're showing here. And then we show those proteins here and eventually we're going to have a gene sequence. And the gene sequence that I have is just a very small gene sequence, and this is where we need to talk a little bit about the breakdown of the model. This is not big enough to be a full gene. In fact, this would only code for two amino acids. And most proteins are about 300 poly, or most pro proteins, polypeptides, about 300 amino acids. So that would mean I would need 900 nucleotides and no table in any classroom is going to be long enough for that. So we just use it as a model and we explain to our students what's wrong with the model and they get the idea. So I can have my students separate this out. I can have them replicate the DNA and then what I can have them do is go through and look at inheritance. So this is chromosome 13. Hopefully it will help you not let Friday the 13th get you down. You can come see us at Modeling the Molecular World this summer in Milwaukee where we can work on this modeling exercise and explore many others in great detail. Enjoy your day and I'll see you next time.